Okay, so we're going to do some uh, work on uh, the equation of the straight line and gradient and so forth. So here we've got a question. It's asking us to write down the coordinates of the point S. So we need to remember that coordinates always go on these axes with X and Y. Uh, the X coordinate is first and then the Y coordinate is second. So to get to S, we go along the X first, that's one. And then we go up and the Y is four. Okay, so that coordinate is uh, 1, 4. It says the coordinates of point T are at negative 3, 2. So our x number is negative 3 and our y number is negative 2. So along to negative 3 and then up to 2. Positive. And it says mark with a cross and label the point T. So let me show we've done what they wanted. Okay. And then the question says write down an equation of the line L. Okay, so a bit of memory things here, guys. We need to remember four types of lines, really. Um, if this is our y and x, then we need to remember our vertical lines always have the same x coordinate, so they'll be x equals a number. So if this was 4, then this would be x equals 4. If we have horizontal lines, then our y number stays the same. So y equals a number. And if we have lines going at the diagonal, then that's always at the form y equals mx plus c. <coughs> so we've got to remember those uh, special types. Now, when we look at line L, we can see that it's a vertical line where every coordinate starts with 3 something. So all the x numbers stay the same. So when it says write down an equation of the line L, for this one it's going to be x equals 3, because it crosses through the x-axis at 3, and every coordinate starts with a 3. Okay, so that's a reminder about uh, some parts of coordinates and lines. So let's go on. So this question's um, given us a graph already drawn, and it's asking us to find the equation of the line P. So we can see that it's a straight line, and what we need to remember under the what do we know about straight lines is that all equations of straight lines have that general format where the y-coordinate is found by doing a number times the x-coordinate plus a constant value. And we should have in mind that our c-value is always where the line crosses the y-axis when x is 0. Our gradient, which is the m number, is for every one we go horizontally, we either go up or down the gradient value. So the gradient is defined as the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. So this is the change in y over the change in x. So when we look at um, this data here, we choose two points on the line to work out the gradient. So we'll choose that point there because it uh, crosses at an exact number. And we'll choose this point here because again it crosses at an exact number so that we can see our values very quickly. So we're kind of imagining a horizontal movement and a vertical movement in this case. So our change in y means a change in the y coordinates. So we started at 4 and we went down to 1. So our change in y is 3, positive because we're going upwards. And our change in x is from 0 along to 6. So our change in x is 6. So m is defined as the gradient of the line. And as I say, it's the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. In this case, we had a change in y of 3 and a change in x of 6. So that cancels to 1 half. So our equation is going to start with y equals a half x. So we replace the m with the gradient value we found. And our c is where the line crosses the y axis when x is worth 0. So it crosses at that point there. So our c value is going to equal 1. So that's going to be the equation. Now our check under the T for test is we say, OK, that's fine. Let's check a value. Uh, so we'll check what happens when x is 2. So our y coordinate is going to be a half times the x value plus 1. And uh, half 2 is 1 plus 1 is 2. 
So we expect our coordinate of our checkpoint to be 2, 2. So we find 2 on our x, we come up to our line, come across, and we can see that it is 2. So that check worked. And that's the special property of all equations of straight lines, is that it doesn't matter what x value you choose, it should give you the y value that's on the actual line. So that's um, a reminder about how to calculate the equation of a line using y equals mx plus c, and recognising the gradient is the change in y divided by the change in x. Just remember that if your lines are doing something like this, then we have to remember that our change in x is that, so the change in x numbers was 2. But our change in the y number here is negative 1 because we've gone down to meet the line again. So our gradient will be a negative. So just got to remember that. So in this case, our gradient will equal negative 1 over 2, so it'll be negative a half. Okay, so just a quick reminder about to be careful with negative gradients. Um, this question is asking us to draw um, a graph of y equals 2x take away 3 for values of x from negative 2 to 3. It's given us a blank um, grid, so therefore it's expecting us to draw the axes on and to do all the labelling. The question's worth four marks, so we have to remember that sometimes we've got to do a bit of work to get those marks. So classic way of doing this kind of question is to create some coordinates. So it's told us to go from x of negative 2 to positive 3 and we'll choose one value in between, uh, simplest value to choose in between would be 0 and the reason why we've chosen those is because it's the beginning of the line, the end of the line and something roughly in the middle and we only need three coordinates because we recognise that y equals mx plus c tells us that it's going to be a straight line of a positive gradient because it's telling us it's positive 2 so to get our y numbers, the graph equation is telling us to do twice the x number, take away 3. So if I do 2 times 2 times negative 2, then take away 3. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, take away 3 is negative 7. 2 times 0, take away 3. 2 times 3, take away 3. So that uh, should be our coordinates. And we then need to think about the scale of this graph. Well, our x number has got to go from negative 2 to positive 3, so there's plenty of space across. We've got to go from negative 7 up to 3, so that means we must allow down to negative 7. So looks like if we. Do something like this. So we have to go down to negative seven. So negative seven. So if we said this was negative eight, uh, negative seven, negative six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three. That's going to work. So I'll do this. Negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, and zero. And then, of course, we've got to do our x numbers. So we'll zero. And because we've only got to go for three, that's what we use. One, two, three. We don't have to use the same number of squares per number. We can choose a scale that suits. Uh, negative one, negative two. Okay, so finish off the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five, six. And label, really important. Uh, we get our four marks by labeling. So we've now got our coordinates. So our coordinates were negative 2, negative 7. So negative 2, negative 7, 0, negative 3, and 3, 3. Now if we calculate those correctly, then this should form a perfect straight line. Which it does, so that's good. And that would be enough then to get us four marks because we've calculated some correct coordinates, we've plotted them, we've actually drawn the graph. Remember when you draw a graph it must have a line on it, not just points. That's an easy mark lost if you're not careful guys. And then we have connected up all the points between negative 2 and 3 as the question wanted. So we've done that bit. Okay, so that's a reminder about how to draw a graph when they don't give us a table already drawn and we've got to do the fully labelling to get all the marks. 
Okay, so this question's uh, given us some lines already drawn. Um, they're all straight, so we know this is talking about y equals mx plus c, where c is the intercept point on the y-axis when x is worth 0. So we've got to match some equations. Okay, so we can see here then that we've got several uh, lines, and this one's saying gradient of a half, and it's going through plus 2. And okay, so probably worth calculating the gradients of these lines so that we can see what's going on here. Okay, so the gradient here is the change in y divided by the change in x. Uh, the change in y has gone down, so that's negative 2, and the change in x has gone across 4, so that's negative 1 half. It's gone through the point 2, so this one will have an equation of y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. Um, this one, the change in y is positive, so that's 2. Uh, the change in x is 4. So I've gone across 4, up 2. So delta y over delta x is going to be 2 over 4, so that's a half. So y will equal a half x, and it's gone through 2, so a half x plus 2. Um, this one, um, we've gone across 1, down 2. So our gradient is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So that's negative 2. So this one has an equation of y equals negative 2x take away 2. It's across the 2, uh, negative 2. Um, this one, gone across 4, down 2. So our gradient is going to be negative 1 half. Negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. It's crossed at negative 2. Um, this one, our uh, change in x is 1. Our change in y is positive 2. So it's going to be y equals 2x. Uh, gone through 2, so plus 2. And for this one, um, it's going to be y equals our change in uh, x is 1, and our change in y is positive 2 because it's gone up to y. So this is going to be y equals 2x take away 2. Okay, so let's come through and um, decide what all the equations are. So now we can uh, just go to the table and we can uh, match up. So this one wants a half x plus 2, and uh, half x plus 2 was graph B. Uh, 2x take away 2. Uh, 2x take away 2 was f, uh, negative 1 half x plus 2, uh, negative 1 half x plus 2 was graph A, uh, negative 2x take away 2, uh, negative 2x take away 2, so graph C, 2x plus 2 was graph E, and then negative 1 half x um, take away 2, negative 1 half x take away 2 was graph D. Okay, so that's how that question uh, would be done. Um, there's lots of other ways you could do it. You could try and look at um, the plus and minus numbers at the end, the C values, the intercept points, and see who can match them that way. But we did need to calculate the gradients because we needed to know uh, how steep the lines were. Um, we could have guessed uh, from the fact that uh, this had a slight change, uh, and this one had a slight change, so it was a bigger gradient than a half. There's all kinds of things you could have done here. But uh, working out the equation of the line was the surest way of getting the correct answers. Okay, so this is a question about a travel graph, and it's saying that um, Hannah drives 45 miles from her home to a meeting. So we can see here that this was uh, 45. And it's asking us uh, to do a meeting with us for an hour. She then drives home at a steady speed of 30 miles per hour with no stops. Okay, so she has a meeting for an hour. So we know uh, horizontal lines means you're actually stopped. So if you're at a meeting, you're at the same distance, you've not moved. And we want to do an hour. So we work out the scale and we can see that it's two centimetres for every hour. So we have to do two centimetres. So that's going to be the meeting. And then uh, it says it travels back at 30 miles an hour. Well, we've got 45 miles to do. 
Now we've got lots of ways we can do in this. We can do the uh, speed, distance, time, and we can work out the time by doing the distance divided by the speed. So we've got 45 divided by 30, which is one and a half hours. Or we could uh, just use logic, um, 30 miles in one hour, and then we've got 15 more to go. And 15 miles must be half of this, so it's half an hour. So we've got um, one and a half hours, whichever way you want to do it. So one and a half hours is, well, it was two centimetres for an hour, so it's one centimetre for half an hour. So it'll be another three centimetres, so one, two, three. So... It says it doesn't stop, so it's just a straight line, a constant speed on the way back. Okay, so that's completed the travel graph, and we can check it's reasonable in our mind. Uh, stops for an hour, travels for one and a half hours. Um, the meeting started at 2.30. And if we did two and a half hours on from there, it'd be five o'clock. So we checked in a different way to make sure we got to the same end point. The question then says, uh, what was Hannah's average speed over the whole journey? So we have to remember there's a slight change to the formula for speed when we talk about average speed. Average speed is the total distance travelled divided by the total journey time. Well, we can see from the question that the meeting was 45 miles away from home and then there was 45 miles to travel back. So the total distance to travel was 90 miles. And the total time for the journey was uh, from naught to five hours. So it was five hours. And when we do 90 divided by five, we get an answer of 18 miles per hour. Okay, so that was a quick reminder about how to work out average speed recognising that uh, the total distance divided by the total journey time, so 18 miles per hour, was the average speed for the whole journey, including the stopping times. OK, so that's a reminder about um, straight lines, um, equation of straight line, y equals mx plus c, and some links to questions that involve straight line graphs.